same metallic signature as Atlas itself, nickel, cobalt, and exotic alloys not typically found in comets. Even stranger, while 3 i Atlas had already baffled researchers with a thermal profile suggesting a 10 gigawatt power source, the companions appeared to radiate nearly twice that, 20 gigawatts each, contained inside objects no larger than city blocks. For comparison, that's enough power to light entire nations compacted into fragments of rock and ice. Natural processes don't do that. Nature doesn't build small bodies with reactors inside. But if they were probes, if they were engineered, then the implications are staggering. The most haunting part of this discovery was not their power, but their suddenness. For weeks, telescopes around the world, both amateur and professional, had been watching Atlas carefully. NASA's Juno, the Parker Solar Probe, even missions en route to Mercury and beyond were collecting data. Not one of them saw these companions coming. According to Harvard's Avib, the nine bodies didn't drift into view. They blinked into existence in a fraction of a millisecond, faster than a camera flash, faster even than the blink of an eye. Our instruments simply weren't fast enough to capture the moment they appeared. To astronomers, it was as if the sky itself had changed in an instant. One moment a solitary traveler, the next a convoy. Theories poured in. Did Atlas release them like many probes, deploying its drones as it entered the inner solar system? Were they dormant until triggered by the sun's gravity or radiation? Or did they arrive from somewhere else entirely, hiding in plain sight, until the perfect moment to reveal themselves? Whatever the answer, their appearance wasn't random. It was deliberate. When astrophysicists tried to model the companions' energy profiles, their computers failed. No matter how they adjusted the equations, temperature, density, fusion or fission reactions, the numbers refused to converge. You cannot fit the kind of power radiating from these objects into something that small without technology beyond our comprehension. Exotic containment fields, antimatter catalysis, even dark matter reactions were thrown onto the table because ordinary physics couldn't explain it. Each of the nine bodies appeared hotter, denser and more energetic than the main craft as if they were designed for close approaches, while Atlas itself remained at a distance. In other words, they weren't just escorts. They were frontline agents, carrying more raw power than anything humanity has ever conceived. The realization sent ripples through the scientific community because it suggested intent. Something had placed these objects here, something had given them impossible energy cores, and something was directing their path. As images spread online, ordinary people asked the obvious question, why hadn't we been told? Why did it take an amateur astronomer with a hillside telescope to expose what the world's most advanced observatories had missed? NASA and ESA issued only the vaguest of statements, acknowledging ongoing observations while refusing to release raw web spectra. Behind the scenes, however, leaked memos revealed emergency meetings at the Pentagon, ESA headquarters, and China's space agency, with whispers of contingency plans ranging from interception missions to planetary defense protocols. Private space companies were quietly approached about rapid launches, while European designs for asteroid deflection were dusted off. And yet to the public, silence. No warnings, no explanations, just carefully controlled reassurances that there was no evidence of threat. But silence speaks volumes. Because if nine hidden objects really did appear alongside 3 I Atlas, each radiating more power than entire nations, then the truth is already too big to contain, and governments know it. When Avi Loeb from Harvard analyzed the sudden appearance of the nine companions, he proposed a theory that sent chills through the astronomical community, the mothership hypothesis. According to him, 3 I Atlas may not be a solitary body at all, but a carrier, a larger interstellar craft releasing probes as it approached its target, in this case, our solar system. The escorts weren't fragments or debris, but scouts deliberately deployed to maneuver closer to worlds, while the main craft remained farther away. If true, this would explain their denser power signatures, their synchronized orbits and their simultaneous emergence. The horrifying implication was that these probes were not just drifting. They had a mission. Were they mapping the planets, searching for resources or simply observing us, the only intelligent species they could now detect? To Loeb, one thing was certain. Probes this advanced do not appear by accident. They appear when they are meant to be seen. Not everyone agreed with Loeb. 
some astronomers offered a more natural explanation that Atlas had collided with a massive interstellar rock, shattering into smaller fragments that retained its speed and trajectory. This could, in theory, account for the nine companions flying in formation. But almost immediately, the numbers broke the theory apart. Fragments from collisions do not ignite like reactors. They don't radiate 20 gigawatts each, and they certainly don't produce identical tails of glowing green light with the same exotic metallic composition as the parent body. The precision of their trajectories was too perfect, their synchrony too absolute. Even the skeptics had to admit that the companions behaved less like broken shards of a comet and more like machines designed for a purpose. The natural explanation crumbled under the weight of the evidence, leaving only the engineered hypothesis standing, and that was a truth most scientists were not ready to say out loud. As if the nine companions weren't enough, the story grew stranger still. From the opposite direction of the sky, another interstellar object, C2025R2, nicknamed Swan, was approaching. One hundred times larger and brighter than Atlas, with a tail stretching five times the width of the full moon, Swan was set to reach its closest pass to the sun within days of Atlas. Two interstellar giants, converging on the same corridor of space, escorted by a fleet of hidden companions, all during the same week in October. To many, this timing was no coincidence. Some speculated Swan was arriving as a protector, intercepting Atlas and its escorts before they could unleash whatever mission they carried. Others suggested the opposite, that both objects were part of the same operation, converging near the sun to exchange energy, data, or even cargo. And then there were the historians pointing out that records of unusual green-tailed visitors stretched back millennia, appearing in cycles of roughly 2,200 years. If those records were real, then humanity had seen this before and survived. But survival this time was no guarantee. While the public was left to speculate, governments were anything but idle. Leaked memos revealed emergency sessions at the Pentagon, at European Space Command, and within China's National Space Administration. Draft contingency plans outlined everything, from reconnaissance probes to outright planetary defense scenarios. China reportedly redirected resources from its Long March 9th rocket program into designing a high-velocity interceptor. The ESA dusted off designs from its abandoned Don Quixote asteroid deflection mission. Even private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin were quietly approached about rapid response launches, and yet in public, silence. NASA refused to release Webb's raw spectra. ESA declined to comment, and the White House issued only a one-sentence statement we are aware of the situation and monitoring it. That silence fed paranoia, because when nine objects suddenly appear, each radiating impossible power, and the world's most powerful institutions respond not with transparency, but with secrecy. It suggests that the stakes are far higher than anyone dares admit. Perhaps the most unsettling aspect of the companions was how they came into existence. According to Harvard's analysis, the nine objects appeared in just a single millisecond, far faster than any natural fragmentation process could occur. To put that into perspective, a human blink lasts 300 milliseconds, a camera flash about five. These companions emerge 30,000 times faster than a blink and 100 times faster than a flash. For astrophysicists, this meant one thing. They didn't drift into being. They were deployed like a precision release mechanism, activating at the exact right moment, Nothing we know in natural astronomy behaves this way. Comets fracture under stress slowly over hours or days. Asteroids split apart from impacts in a cascade of dust and fragments, but nine symmetrical objects, all radiating impossible power, emerging in perfect lockstep with their parent body in under a millisecond, that isn't astronomy. That's technology. Speculation soon erupted about the purpose of the nine companions. If they were probes, then they might be scouts designed to fan out and study the planets of our solar system. While Atlas remained at a distance, their stronger energy cores would make sense, built to endure closer encounters with worlds, atmospheres, and magnetic fields. But some researchers warned of a darker possibility. 20 gigawatts of power in such small objects is not just excessive for observation. It's weapon-level energy. Could these be harvesters designed to mine resources, or extract energy from planets and moons. Or worse, could they be enforcers? Machines meant to neutralize threats before the main craft proceeds. Without communication, we are left with silence. 
and silence invites dread, because intent is invisible until it acts, and by the time it does it may already be too late to respond. Historians, too, entered the debate, pointing out that strange green-tailed comets have been recorded throughout human history in cycles of roughly two millennia. Chinese imperial archives mention a heavenly dragon in 200 BCE. Babylonian tablets describe a splitting star that heralded upheavals. Medieval European chronicles speak of a green banner in the sky around the year 1000. If these records are accurate, then perhaps what we are witnessing now is not new at all, but the return of something that has visited before. Could it be that every 2,200 years, these objects converge on the sun, leaving behind only cryptic stories that our ancestors tried to immortalize? If so, then our age is not the first to face this enigma. We are only the first to do so with the instruments to truly see it. And that realization is perhaps the most terrifying, that humanity may not be experiencing a first contact at all, but a recurring event that predates civilization itself. While the public speculates and wonders, Behind closed doors, the mobilization has already begun. Defense satellites are being recalibrated, reconnaissance probes repurposed, and classified communications intensify between space agencies. Reports suggest China has accelerated its long-delayed planetary defense program, while Europe is resurrecting designs for kinetic interceptors. The United States, silent in public, has allegedly convened emergency panels at both NASA and the Pentagon, exploring everything from nuclear readiness to signal strategies. But here is the haunting truth. Time is against us. With Atlas and its companions approaching perihelion within weeks, there is no window to build new technology or mount a coordinated defense. If these objects are hostile, we are already unprepared. And if they are not, then why the silence? Why the secrecy? Because perhaps the greatest fear is not what they are, but what acknowledging them would do to us. In the days following the appearance of the nine escorts, subtle anomalies began to ripple through the solar system. Magnetometers detected faint synchronized pulses aligned with the orbits of Atlas and its companions, repeating every 43 seconds like a heartbeat. Seismographs in Antarctica, South America and Asia logged ultra-low vibrations with no tectonic origin. Even migratory animals, whales in the Pacific, birds in Europe, insects deep underground, shifted their navigation routes as if their internal compasses had been scrambled. These signals weren't random, and their timing perfectly matched the movements of the convoy. Some researchers began to whisper that Earth itself was being activated, its magnetic skeleton resonating with something hidden inside those objects. If this was coincidence, it was the most perfectly aligned one in human history. If it wasn't, then the nine escorts weren't just traveling. They were tuning the solar system, then came the most chilling discovery. Radio astronomers intercepted a directed energy burst from one of the escorts, not aimed at Earth, but at the Moon. Its trajectory was precise, striking a region long known for mascons, dense gravitational anomalies beneath the lunar crust. These mascons have baffled scientists for decades, hinting at structures or concentrations of mass that conventional geology cannot fully explain. Now for the first time they were being targeted, the signal was layered, structured in amplitude and polarization, not language but code. What if the moon isn't just a silent satellite, but a node in a much older system, dormant until activated? Were these nine companions awakening something hidden beneath its surface, something planted there long before humanity took its first steps? If the escorts are probes, then perhaps the moon was never ours to begin with. Despite mounting evidence, the silence from global institutions only deepened. NASA refused to release Webb's raw spectra. ESA deflected every inquiry, and China remained cryptically silent, though reports leaked of emergency launches being quietly prepared. The White House issued a single sentence, we are aware and monitoring the situation, and then nothing more. For ordinary people, the only source of truth came from amateur astronomers, posting their images online, piecing together patterns that governments refused to acknowledge but silence itself became the loudest message. Because when nine powered objects suddenly appear around an interstellar visitor and the world's most powerful agencies respond with censorship and secrecy, it is not reassurance. It is confirmation that what they know cannot be spoken aloud. Finally, orbital mechanics revealed a detail too precise to ignore. Both 3I Atlas and its nine escorts, along with the oncoming giant Swan R2, 
were set to align within a narrow solar corridor in mid-October. Their perihelia would overlap within days. Their distances from the Sun separated by less than 50 million kilometers. For random bodies, such synchronicity is impossible. For engineered ones, it looks like scheduling. To many astronomers, this meant only one thing, a rendezvous. Whether it was a refueling, a data exchange, or something darker, the timing was flawless. And the blackout window when the sun blinds our telescopes ensured that the most critical moments would remain unseen. It was as if the sky itself conspired to keep us in the dark, or worse, as if the timing had been chosen precisely to hide the truth. For centuries, humanity has looked at the night sky and imagined myths, dragons, banners of fire, omens of change. But what the James Webb Space Telescope, the very large telescope and the eyes of ordinary people with backyard instruments have now revealed is not myth, but reality. 3 Eye Atlas is no longer a solitary mystery. It is flanked, escorted by nine smaller companions that radiate impossible power, maneuver with precision and appear not through chance, but through deployment. In a blink, the solar system went from hosting one interstellar object to ten, and that revelation changes everything, because if they are probes, if they are machines, then they are not here to drift. They are here to act. Their synchronized movements, their directed pulses toward the moon, their strange resonance with Earth's magnetic field, all point toward a mission that is still unfolding before our eyes. Add to this the convergence of Swan R2, 100 times larger, set to arrive in the same corridor at the same time, and the silence of our institutions begins to feel less like caution and more like containment. They know something extraordinary is happening. They know this is not coincidence, and they are choosing silence over disclosure. We wanted answers, but what we have instead are questions that cut deeper than anything science has prepared us for. Are we watching a convoy arriving for rendezvous? A fleet executing a schedule written long before our existence? Are these escorts guardians, scouts, or harvesters? Is the moon itself part of a system we never understood? The terrifying truth may be that these questions will not be answered by us at all, but by them, on their terms, and in their time. The greatest fear is not that we have discovered something alien. The greatest fear is that this convoy was always coming, that its cycles have passed before, and that humanity is only now advanced enough to notice. What if we were never the watchers, but the watched? What if our telescopes didn't uncover the secret of Three-Eye Atlas, but instead triggered the next phase of its mission? This isn't a science fiction story. It is happening now above our heads in real time. Ten objects, synchronized, powerful, and deliberate, are carving their path through our solar system. And as they move closer, one haunting possibility remains. Maybe they are not just passing through, 